everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Miss T, and that is me. Today, we're having a conversation with Nante. Nante is a former student at Tutuli City. I did not really teach her, but we were very close, and we continue to stay in touch. All right, enjoy. Is that okay with you and your personal life, too? No, it's fine, man. I just hope with T, I don't do too much. No, you're not too much. You're great. Trust me, you're great. <laughs> okay, say that. Thank you. Okay, so you go first. Hi. Um, okay, Miss. I'm just gonna ask you anything. Yeah. Random. Okay. Random's fine, yeah. So I'm gonna start with your personal life. Okay. How was it like for you to move from South Africa? How how was Taiwan? How did you feel? Yeah, um, I think that I have been fortunate enough to be raised by an open-minded father. So when I told him that I was applying for a job abroad, he was totally for it. He supported me one hundred and twenty percent. The application process itself was scary you know because you don't know if you can trust the person on the other end of the email um and then um it was hard to tell people that i was going um and um yeah it was very emotional saying goodbye but when i eventually landed in taiwan i had a friend that was waiting for me here and she helped me out a lot because I think arriving in a foreign land all by yourself is scary. So if you have somebody abroad that can um, help you settle, that can show you around, show you where to buy this and that um, is a huge blessing. And that was a huge blessing for me. So I, so my friends and I have this conversation um, because my friend, this happened to my friend six months after she arrived here. And then this happened to me like exactly one year after I arrived in Taiwan. I went through um, what I call like a dip, okay? So it, it's not really a culture shock, but it was a very, very emotional moment for me because I missed my family. They were too far, I couldn't go. And so I cried. Um, I remember we had gone to Taipei 101 to watch the, the fireworks. New Year's Eve. And um, as soon as that was done, I was crying from uh, when we went to watch the fireworks. Took a train, I was crying, went to McDonald's, ordered a burger, <laughs> a Big Mac, on my face, streaming with tears. I got home and I cried for hours and hours and hours because I just, I was just like, this is hard. I'm too far from home. I cannot go back now. And I have work probably the day well, two days later, and it was just really hard for me. And so when I met my friends here, it turns out that they also went through the same thing. And so now we're just at a point where we're trying to get each other through those moments because they still do happen. You miss home, you miss the people that love you unconditionally, what you're familiar with. Um, other than that, it's been a wonderful experience and it has opened up my mind to um, this part of the world, something that I wasn't exposed to when I was still in South Africa. I've made wonderful friends. I've taught amazing students and um, yeah, and I've, I've, I've traveled a lot, uh, which was my dad's dream for sure. So, um, well, now my dream as well to travel, yeah. <clears throat> So tell me, how was it for you leaving home, going to university? Leaving home was, it was amazing when I had to leave. I felt amazing. I was like, oh, finally, I'm gonna be away for a while. And then I landed. Although I was with both my parents, um, I thought everything was gonna be easy because they were accompanying me there. But when I got there, I realized after moving from the airport to booking the hotel and going somewhere just to get a fresh breeze of a new place, it was very scary because I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to new, meet new people. I have to make new friends. 
I had to understand new personality. I had to, to blend along. I had to, I have to make space for everyone that's going to come into my life. I have to learn who to trust and who not to trust. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of conversations with myself to a point that I think I had more breakdown in the day than I usually do when I'm under pressure. It was worse after my parents left. I thought I could handle it. Some days were very good. Some days I could handle it. Some days I were superwoman. Mm. And then on the other day, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, one, this, no this one was not meant for me. It was yeah. meant for someone strong. Mm -hmm. But every mm -hmm. time I felt like the journey wasn't mine, I figured, although it wasn't mine, it was given to me. Right. So how about I take the walk? Because it's already mine. Mm -hmm. I already have it. So what's there to do? Like, why should I quit? Because if I do, I'm going to go to a new place and meet new people, although it's at home, but I'm still going to meet people. Yeah. So one way, to other, yeah. Have, yeah. one way or the other, I'm going to have to get comfortable with the whole thing. Yeah. And as time went, it got better. But when Corona happened, I stayed at, as I stayed at home for a long time. Mm. Even for God, I had to go back and all of that. When I had to go back, I was excited and it was just fine. Mm. And then I came back home for December holidays, went back on January to finish my um my what my academic year. Came back on March, went back on April. When I went back on April, I stayed for it was April, May, June. So I had to come back here during June. Not bad. It was a life. Yeah. But three months felt like yeah. a year. I couldn't stop telling people how much I miss them. I was even getting irritated by it. There was a time there was a time where I thought, okay, because I seem to have enough money, let me just go there for a weekend mm. and then I'll come back. But then I thought if I go there for a weekend with this little money that I have, what am I gonna do for the rest of the month? With food with things that I'm going to need because mm. I need something that needs money that night almost every day. Right. And I can't ask for money to go back and then come back and then go back again as a wait. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll hold on and wait until I kept getting sick. That's when I realized this is not nice anymore because it might not be me getting sick, but my mental well-being. Because mm -hmm. I miss home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I miss yeah. home. I miss home. Mm. so I learned a lesson <clears throat> that next time I miss home I'm going to waste that money and just come back home yeah it's not a waste I mean it, it depends how you look at it it's not a waste you're just investing in your um in, you know in, in your well-being like you said in your mental well-being for seeing your family makes you feel much better <clears throat> I um <laughs> This is a surprise for me because when Umi Umdule and I look at you, we see you as a very strong woman. And and the last time we hung out, you were telling me about, you know, like all the encouragement that you offered to your peers and, you know, um, the, the people, your, your younger friends, none, none. So to hear you say that you also go through meltdowns, I'm like, no, not you. <laughs> I do, ma'am, a lot. I do a lot. Yeah. Next question. Okay. How many times do you go home a year in one year? How many times do you go home? Um, so for me, before I before I moved to Taiwan, I was also in UCT and um I got um I got used to independence very fast. Actually, let me just tell you one of the saddest stories of my life. So there was this one time, right? I I did not go home because uh, we didn't have money. So in my case is very sad. Uh, as soon as I was in a, uh, somebody else, I, as, okay, so six months after I enrolled in UCT, my dad lost his job. So we didn't have money. <laughs> so it got really hard and I had to like work two, three jobs in a semester and stuff. And there was a point when I did not have money and I had to go and sell my jewelry. So I went to, is it Cash Crusaders? 
I went there and I was selling a bracelet. They said, no, sorry, this is not gold. We cannot accept it. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? So I'm walking from the pick and pay, is it in Morbury? I'm walking from the pick and pay in Morbury, you know, coming down to Res. Um, and I see this Nigerian shop right? They're selling like Nigerian attire and everything. And I just walk in there and I say to this guy, hey, listen, I have this bracelet and I think it's going to go well with that dress and whatnot. And so this guy looks at me and says, how much is it? How much are you selling it for? Um, I said, I'm selling it for 30 rands. He said, okay, fine. So he went to the counter, took out 30 rands and gave it to me. As I was about to give him the bracelet, he said, no, it's fine. Keep it. And I went home and I cried. And that 30 rands, I think it lasted me the whole week. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a huge struggle for me. I mean, those last six months were a huge struggle, but I had friends, man. I had wonderful friends in university. Um, they would bring me food. They would pay for me whenever we went out. And those people are still my friends today. And I think for that reason, I learned to be um, considerate. I learned to, um, to be very generous. And I learned to, to check up on people, I think, to say, are you okay? Like, emotionally financially are you okay I think I can help where I can so um yeah no <clears throat> sorry what was the question again how how many times do you go to do you go home again um so now I try to travel once or twice a year to go home to my family it's it's mm -hmm. initially it was to see you guys and my family I was like yes I cannot wait to see my students and my family. And then the second year, you guys were out of school. And I'm like, where is everyone? Um, yeah, but I'm happy with we still had our picnics, remember? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, do. so we had our picnics, and I would see you guys whenever I come back. So, yeah, once or twice a year. All right, so next it's question. Um, <clears throat> have you had... Have you had bad experiences with friends ever since you left left home? And like, what lessons have you learned from that? Oh, friends, ma'am, I've had bad experiences with friends my whole life. Mm -hmm. From primary, I was bullied, and I was not aware of it because this girl would come to me and be like, and they give me one rent say if you don't want to and at that time I was thinking okay then I just gave her the money mm -hmm. in high school I had friends but they didn't like things that I did so I had to stop but whenever I didn't like things that they did they continued and blamed me for their doing so I figured okay this is not my part and then I stopped being friends with them and university I thought I should not interact a lot with a lot of people and I shouldn't involve a lot of emotions. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be emotional about any relationship. I should just be friends with whoever who wants to be friends with me and allow whoever who wants to not be friends with me to not be friends with me. But other than that, I've, I've had this one friend who's been amazing from Cape Town. She's been, she's older than me, and she's been a sister, a friend, and everything else. Whenever we go through a struggle, we go there together. And whenever we're okay, we're okay together. Right. Whenever we want to go out, we go out together, especially with my schedule. I'm forever busy. I forever have to study. If not, I have to read. If not, there's always, that I, there's always something that I have to do, and she puts up with me. Sometimes she wants to go out so badly, but because I can't, she stays. And we stay together. Mm -hmm. She's one friend who never turns her back on me. Even when we argue, she makes sure I'm okay afterwards. Even when she's the one who's upset, she makes sure I'm okay. And then I've heard other friends where I felt, okay, we have a strong friendship going, but things just change. And then I figured, okay, things are changing now. and I have to act, but I don't have to show them that I'm acting because if I do, we're going to exchange the same words and you can't take back words. Yeah. So yeah. better I just distance myself from them. Mm -hmm. For me, 
before anyone else, I have to put me first. So I'm dealing with that right now. I have friends that I don't even understand myself. I try every day to get along with them, try every day to understand them, but it's very difficult with me and my personality because once after a while, I feel really down or once after a while, I just don't want to talk to anyone. Once I say what I'm just mad, I'm upset, I'm out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm that person, I'm very moody. And people often give up on me because they're like, ah, whenever she's happy, we should be happy. Whenever she's mad, we should be. Like you're bipolar. (laughs) Exactly. Whereas sometimes it's just one my space. I just want to be alone with my music or my my phone. I just want to eat. So Um, people tend to think, I'm going to make you feel at rest about that and let you know that I I go through the same thing. My close friends go through the same thing. I don't know if it's a, it's a female thing or not, but I can feel 10 different things in one day. And, and, and what helps for me now, having gone through what you're going through as well, you know, with like feeling like different emotions in the same day and not knowing how to articulate that to people is my friends and I, we agreed on the immediate call so if I feel something I will call her and say hey listen I feel this type of way and then she'll be like okay what happened what led led you to feel that you know just basically have somebody to process your emotions with so I think that um, just know that you're going to need like a sisterhood as you grow older you you're not supposed to go through life yourself and I'm not saying trust everybody um, but I'm saying which there are some people that you can give a benefit of a doubt to. And, and here's something that I learned. Um, you can be a friend to someone who's not a friend to you. Do you understand what I mean? Because I'm friends to people who are not really friends to me. And I have a lot of those. I have a lot of people that are, are like, are you okay? But I never really think of checking up on them. And then I also have people that I have like a, a mutual relationship with. So in terms of friendship, it's hard to lose friends. I know like I had to separate from like a friend I was like I was friends with for years. Uh, but um, this is this, somebody once said that, um, of course, you're going to lose friends because you're growing, you're changing, you're evolving, you're trying to find yourself. And also you just grow apart. Like there's a point where, you know, you guys just are not the same people anymore and there's nothing bringing you guys together. Yeah, so in a nutshell, I say, find your sisterhood, even if it's just two girls, just, yeah. And also be a friend. But I know you're, you're like that. You're like a friend to a lot of people. I'm a friend to everyone, actually. <laughs> thing about me is when I don't like something, I don't like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's yeah, it. makes sense. I yeah. don't want to negotiate. I don't want to find a way to like mm-hmm. it. When it's out for me, it's out, and I don't want it near me. Yeah. So in res, they tend to think I think I'm special, or I don't like certain things because of my moods or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I sit down mm-hmm. and think maybe I'm cruel, or maybe I don't understand certain things. Maybe I'm selfish and all of that. Mm-hmm. But then I come to a point and think, whenever someone needs me, I jump literally. Mm-hmm. So. I'm not going to sit down and blame myself for things that I don't like. I'm allowed to mm-hmm. not like the same thing. Yeah. to voice out that I don't like those things. So right now, ma'am, I'm just dealing with a lot of that. But I do have two friends, actually, um, that I tell almost everything to. Mm-hmm. I have a guy friend that I tell everything to. Mm-hmm. I my name. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just joking. Sorry, I know your mom's right next to you. I was just joking. Mom's <laughs> off. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean everything to ma'am, including my dates, including school, my emotions, everything. We've been friends since high school, actually. We were never really close in high school because he had his friends. Okay. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to crowd his space. But after high school, he realized that he gets lonely and who's this guy hmm. the um, albino oh yeah 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 him yeah yeah i like him oh yeah, yeah he's cool man 
And then I, I figured, okay, now that there's no high school, he needs me more than he did before. Mm-hmm. And now we're good friends, actually, man. Oh, he's, he's always mad at me, and I'm always apologizing. <laughs> but we are amazing friends. Whenever he feels he has a problem and can get his way through it, he tells me. And I always try to find a way. I don't always have solutions like he does. Whenever I have a problem, he has solutions like within yeah. the of fingers. Mm. With me, I struggle a lot, but I always find a way. Mm. And we, we are having a great friendship. That's great, yeah. And then I have my girlfriend, who is a good friend as well, that I tell everything to. So with these two people, I tell everything to a point where I even tell them whenever I feel like I'm having my panic attack Mm -hmm. and I can't hold it. I tell them. I tell them that, okay, right now I'm struggling to breathe. So if I don't reply within the next 10 minutes, make sure you call me just for me to move or to act up. Sometimes I can't move whenever I'm having these breakdowns or this um, panic attack. Or these episodes, I can't do anything. I can't even think straight. Yeah. But for the mere fact that I can pick up my phone and call somebody, yeah. I know who to call always. And they're always available. Even at two in the morning, I know whenever I'm feeling this bad that I can call them. I can't always call my parents because my parents panic a lot. Mm. And I'm far away. So I need someone who's my peer, someone who'll be able to say something that I laugh at. Other than my parents who'll be, Call an ambulance. Get water. <laughs> they panic. Oh, God. Get water. Oh, no. Can I? Can I find out yeah. what do you think? What do you think is causing the panic attacks? I don't know, man. It started when I was doing grade four. Okay, so you do. So you before. you start you start thinking and then you overthink and then it just grows into something that scares you. Yes, man. Oh. Um, at first I thought it was just probably thoughts. Sometimes I think it's crowds. Sometimes I think it's bad vibes. People mm-hmm. that come over and I feel they're too heavy for me and then it starts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so yeah. I told him about it. And then he once said to me, you know you can think about something subconsciously. So. And I thought to myself, that's not possible. You can't think about something and not know that you're thinking about it. And then he said to me, you can and you're probably thinking about something, mm-hmm. but you're not aware of it. And it's affecting you so bad that it's changing your whole mood. It's making you so emotional. You just want to sit down and continue thinking about it. Whereas you're thinking, you're not thinking about it. You're just trying to change the thought away, mm-hmm. but you can't. Yeah. So that's when I yeah. figured, okay, so this is a thought thing. This is a thinking thing. Mm-hmm. I have to deal with it. But I can't always control my thoughts. Yeah. I try. I, yeah. I, I, I think that you can continue to be patient with yourself and get to be and have like a, a level of self-awareness. Say, okay, these are my triggers, you know, um, these are the environments that I should avoid and work on for your own well-being, like you said. Mm-hmm. I I I wanna touch mm-hmm. on <laughs> because we had this conversation the other day um and I want to touch on this again like I I asked a ton of this question like what is the one thing that you feel that I should know no wait let me let me ask this question correctly what is the one thing that you wish I knew about you when we were still um, in school well I was a teacher then you were still a student I wish you knew how much I loved you. I loved you. <laughs> how much I loved you. <laughs> oh, I love you too. I wish you knew how much I just wanted to be close to you and talk to you and have that relationship with you, have a strong relationship with you. That's what I wanted more than everything mm-hmm. when I saw you for the first time. And then I figured I'll wait. My time will come. When my time came, <laughs> traveling also came. <laughs> so there was no room for me anymore. But I did have um a few months with you, man. And to those months, I'm grateful. I think I appreciate all the time that I got to spend with you. It wasn't enough for me because I wanted the longest time on earth. So 
but mm-hmm. it was enough at the same time because I got a chance to be with you. Thinking yeah. of whoever yeah. who started training school at that time, training high school at that time, or whoever who knew you at that time and still had to find their way through you. At that time, I had discovered how to get through you and how to talk to you and how to be friends with you. Mm-hmm. Although I was still nervous and it wasn't easy because I had to learn your personality and I had to learn what you like and what you don't like. I had to understand what you can put up with and cannot put up with. It was the longest time for me, but it was amazing being yeah. friends with you and getting to know you on a personal level. Yeah, I I would say for me, like as I'm getting to know you now, I I want you to know now that I am proud of you beyond words, beyond what words could describe. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I mean who, Memphis and I talk about you and, you know, like, how is she doing? Is she okay? Like, I'm so proud of her. I know she's going to be a wonderful woman in the future. And I think that's why we're also trying to keep you close because it's like, we, we need you. I don't know, like you feed, I feel like you feed my soul just by being in my life. And that's why I would lose contact with you and then hunt you down. I'm like, no, where is she? I need her in my life. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm so glad that, you know, like at the time it was like a, a teacher student relationship, but now it's like more of a friendship. And I love it. Like I, I'm learning from you. Um, and, and I think you're opening up my eyes to certain things. And, <laughs> and also you're like, you're, it's so strange because I feel like I should be pushing you to, you know, like achieve your goals. And I will do that. You know that I'll cheer for you and everything. But I feel like you're also like, you know, returning that for me. And that is very essential. So I really appreciate that. And I love you. I love you. I love you too, man. Thank you. Your question, man. How was it like teaching high school learners after teaching grade one? How was the whole experience? How did you? How did you find your way? Uh, so I taught um, I taught high school first and then I went and taught kindergarten and elementary school. Um, so, I mean, students for me in general, I really love. But I will say this, and I think about it, um, having taught high school, right, like grade 10, 11, and 12, I know, I know that you guys have so much potential because I see you like two years later doing something very wonderful, right? And so that has changed the way that I look at my current grade ones and and kindergarten students. And I'm like, you're going to grow up someday and you're going to be a wonderful man or woman and you're going to make a difference in the world, you know? So I treat them with with that respect and and they see that and they appreciate it. And I have conversations with them um, on their level, of course, but I just want them to know that I have an idea of how great your future can be, even if like right now, you know, you're still in grade one, but I know that you're gonna have like a wonder. So I don't speak, um, I told the time about this, like I don't speak down on any of my students, right? Cause I, I know these moments last and I want them to remember that they're very important. Um, so teaching high school was, teaching high school as a young teacher was so interesting. <laughs> first of all I don't have the best sense of fashion like I just I just wear whatever however as long as I'm dressed I'm that type of person right and so you guys had opinions about my outfits (laughs) and I had to take fashion advice from you guys I remember this one time um uh, I forget your names but um that there was like these two um these like a boy and a girl, I think, and then I walked out. I was like, I was in the class and I walked, I wasn't teaching the class, but I was in there doing something. And then I walked out and I said, what do you guys think about these pants that I'm wearing? And they were like, time out. <laughs> That's okay, thanks. Wow. <laughs> So I was like, okay, thank you. All right, cool. And and there were old pants were too. I was just like, every time I washed them, I was like, oh hey, my new comfortable pants. I can wear them to walk to work. And then they were like, no, time up. And um, 
and and we were like the same height. <laughs> I look at our pictures now and I'm like, guys, if you are not wearing a uniform, like same, same. Um, and then this this getting hit on um, by 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 the guys. Um, so that that's also it like interesting i'm gonna tell the story i remember i um, in so office in and you know most it's just like um three blocks of like two-story buildings and our office was like at the, at the back right okay. it's taking lelena far far away uh from everybody else and so i was working late because i had to grade umim duli was out of the office umim Dungan was out of the office and this guy walked in tall dark and an old man, but a student, right? So he walks in and then I'm like, hey, what's up? What are you looking for? I say, no, ma'am, I'm looking for you. I'm like, okay, like, what's up? Do you have a problem? You want to talk? I say, yeah, no, there's something that I've been wanting to tell you. I'm like, okay, fine. What is it? I say, um, no, I just want to tell you that, like, I've been seeing you and I like you and, and yeah, well, so I looked at this person. Now I'm starting to feel intimidated because like our office was small, like there was barely room to walk out. And so um, he's blocking my way out. So, like I couldn't pack my things and just like, his, like, so I'm like looking at him and I'm like, okay, how do I get away with the situation? So I say to him, hey, listen, I'm very honored that you notice me and I understand you feel this way, but um, please understand there's nothing that can happen because I'm your teacher, you know? Um, and then he says, oh, okay, so what you're saying is that you want to be with me. You're going to be my girlfriend. I'm like, no, you're saying the opposite of what I'm saying. <laughs> so as I'm trying to talk him out of that, luckily Umem Dungana walks in. As soon as Umem Dungana walks in, oh, I grabbed oh. my bags and I ran for my life. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that was one of the experiences that I had. Oh man, the network's not so good. He's still there. So we're back. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me see, what else do I want to know about, about you? Um, <clears throat> you cannot talk about relationships, right? Because your mom is... <laughs> My mom is asleep, ma'am. Ma'am, is it recording? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, it's recording. Um, where, where do you see yourself in the near future? Honestly, ma'am, uh, I see myself studying because I'm not, I figured I'm not ready to start working mm -hmm. or to be independent in that level mm. so I figured after this course I can try and apply for another course, course and apply for something else that I like because although I'm here my initial dream was becoming a doctor was doing medicine but because I couldn't go there I can try and do something similar to that mm -hmm. so after this course I thought maybe I should try and do zoology because the love I have for animals is nice your so after this course, um, I'm going to try another course. If not, I'll probably do IT or computer science because I do have a clue of what's going on there. I mean, I did it in high school. Let me not, let me not get discouraged just because I feel like I can't get through the health mm -hmm. department. Let me try something that I already know, something that I have a clue about. Um, I applied somewhere in New York. Nice. And I'm still, I'm still applying and all of that because they gave me an option to apply for 2023. I haven't chosen my courses yet, but I have chosen my institution, and I do get emails from time to time. Sometimes nice. I don't know how to apply to them, and sometimes I get invited to Zoom meetings, but I can't, I can't join because of the fear that I, that I have so far and not being, um, what's the word, not being confident enough mm -hmm. to, to get to go through with it and to continue with what I've started. But I do get emails from time to time reminding me that I haven't chosen my courses. 
And although I get those emails, I don't feel like my, I don't feel like they're going to cancel me because even if they do, I still have time to reapply and fix mm-hmm. my thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I'd like to try and go somewhere and start yeah, learning. Yeah, explore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Although I have this anxiety and this phobia that I don't understand yet, I still go and try new things because I know with the, although it's here, it's something that I can get over. Mm-hmm. It's something that I try by all means to get over or try by all means to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I've realized a few things about it. For instance, I can't be too sad. I can't be too happy. Mm-hmm. And I can't manage a big crowd of people that I do not know. I need to own the stage for me to be okay. I need to be the MC of the event for mm-hmm. me to be okay with the people that are here, although I do not know them. I can't be just too excited. I get nervous about it because every time I'm too excited, I tend to think, okay, the next thing is going to break me down or the next thing is going to hurt me so much that mm-hmm. I won't be able to take the hurt. I can't be too hurt because I get I get an episode. I start panicking. I start thinking of the things that might occur afterwards. Mm-hmm. So with me wanting to travel so much, whereas I have this thing, I need to consider my parents, for example, mm-hmm. because they get very worried. Even when I'm here, I'm still in South Africa, but my parents get very worried whenever I send the text and say, I had a breakdown not so long ago, but I'm okay now. Mm-hmm. Even when I say, but I'm okay now, I still receive like three calls at once. Like, are you okay? Are you sure? Is everything okay? What did you do? What did you eat? What, you know, just to make sure I'm okay. And sometimes I don't know which call to, which call to take first because everyone is calling at the same time. And I said I'm okay, but you guys are still calling just to make sure I'm okay. So I'm thinking... How are they going to deal with the whole thing when I'm overseas? Mm. When my time and the, their time doesn't correspond. When for me, it's the morning or for them, it's the evening. Mm. See, when I'm that side, when I'm, when I'm at America, they won't be able to reach me as easy as they do when I'm at Cape Town. So I need to consider my parents before I consider myself because what happens if I die out there, especially with what I have? Because... When you start, man, I struggle to breathe, I struggle to act, I struggle to do anything. So me thinking, okay, I'll go that side just to explore. But then what happens when I stop breathing? See, so I'm I'm very scared. Yes, I yeah. want to so much, but I'm so scared. I'm very scared. I but I'm thinking about it. I, I totally understand and I, I think it's like now you're being as brave as you possibly can be with just applying because that on its own is scary. Um, so I, my advice, well, I have a lot to say, but I don't want to undermine what you're going through. I just like, everybody feels fear. And so this lady said, uh, you have to feel the fear and keep going. And in terms of being abroad, I, I think maybe instead of jumping into like a, a, a long-term commitment. You could do like monthly visits, you know, get used to it. Like sometimes I have those monthly courses or like a three month long course until you, so you ease yourself into a new environment like you, you did in Cape Town. But I do believe that you like, I mean, I'm here for you and then we'll figure a way, you know, cause um, you, the, the, fu- the future's bright for you. I mean, Chana, we, we see your places at. Eh? <laughs> going this way. I should get sunglasses. Then. And we want to be there fun. with our pom poms going, no, I can't. Burn, <laughs> burn, burn, burn. <laughs> what would be your advice to, to high school students? I can't hear you. <laughs> no, really? Okay, whoa, ma'am. I can hear you. Try Hello. your earphones. Okay. Bye. Hi. Okay, so you were saying before network started acting up that you, let me try and remember. Okay, so you didn't want to date in the same school. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So I figured, okay, I'm going to maintain that role until I finish high school. Grade 8, I had guys like come and go and I was like, no. Grade 9, same thing. Grade 10, grade 11. <laughs> this guy came. Uh-huh. So this guy came. Then, okay, when I was doing grade 11, I was... I've always loved dancing. It's fun to mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I had this other guy teach me how to dance it. I've always liked it. I can see a person who dances that from a distance with Nama. That one is a pantula. So I was dancing and I used to see this guy, man, is good in. Be like, oh, man, he's cute. But it's that. He's cute. That's it. Yeah. Do you think you've had your first love already or you think that's still going to come? I think I have. And and so it is it still happening or is something that ended? It ended, but we talk, mm-hmm. and I realize every time we talk, it would be, he had it bad for me. It was he he was once at a point where I thought he's upset, mm-hmm. and I told him Uguti, when I was at that point, he didn't care about me. So why should I bother caring about you now? Because I feel bad for you because I sympathize a lot with people. So I can't, I can't, I can't understand. I can't empathize with you right now Mm -hmm. because you didn't give me a chance and I needed it. Why should I grant you up? Who am I? I'm not God. I don't go around (laughs) granting. I I I feel poetry. So here's one thing, yeah. So here's one thing that I noticed now when I was teaching a tutor is that black teachers like dating, especially as a schoolgirl in high school, is a huge taboo. Like you're dating, that's it, you're gonna fail, you're gonna do badly because you're entertaining a guy. And how do you like because you've gone through that, how do you want us to handle? at your, your relationships as like high school girls and boys as teachers, black teachers to be in particular, I cannot speak for the other races. Because when whenever okay. you have a boyfriend, it's like, okay, that's it done. You're going to be pregnant, drop out of school. That's the end of your life. And that's not always the case. Okay, man, before I answer that, you asked for your advice um, to anyone. Yes, yes. To speak yes. to their... Um, to speak to their what, what, what is it called? So there are rules, if I may say that. If mm-hmm. you have a rule for yourself, stick to it. If your rule is never eat someone's food, never try someone's food, you're going to regret it. You have that rule for it. disciplined, yeah. Don't mm-hmm. So the rule for, don't change the rule to accommodate someone. Accommodate yourself before anyone else. Mm-hmm. With the relationship part, how you how teachers should deal with it. Well, I, when I was in a relationship, my main aim was to pass the flying colors. My, for me, it was, he should know that I'm smart. He, yeah. I should pass. Mm-hmm. I can't just get 17. I remember there was this difficult math test. I got, was it seven? I'm, I'm not sure if it was seven or 14 out of 15. Ma'am, after that paper, I made sure the next paper I get it. And I did that. So how you teachers should deal with it is you should educate them. Even if it's not part of the syllabus, just to have a conversation with your learner. Some teachers are very strict. They do not have such conversations. They are, their appointment with learners is strictly education. For instance, English teachers, LO teachers, they can try and just communicate with them with life sciences teachers, communicate with them about those things.